it's not just a legal issue. It's not just a security issue. It's a moral issue because it has to do with how human beings are treated. It was allowed to continue. It wasn't stopped, even though Congress and the American people knew about it. Will the American people realize what is happening and be able to rise up uh, against it and uh, reclaim the rule of law? Had the American people made, uh, said no to torture, had Congress said no to torture, the policy and the program would have had to have stopped. And these new techniques included nakedness, hooding, long periods of isolation, the use of dogs to uh, threaten uh, individuals, and um, other techniques, exposures to hot and cold. If we use torture or abuse to get information to stop and save lives, that Al-Qaeda would turn around and use that to recruit new fighters and it'd be counterproductive in the long run. And we knew that because every day in our prison, there was foreign fighters who were telling us that the number one reason they decided to come to Iraq and join the Jihad and fight against us was because of torture and abuse at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay. We have to grow the moral consensus among all American people. The torture is always wrong. We can codify that and make that a part of law, and that's extremely important. But it needs to be a part of our hearts and our souls that, that this is what we believe as American people, that uh, torture is always wrong, without exceptions. It's just never possible. I have always been a very um, patriotic and proud American. Um, I love talking to young people about government. I'm always pushing public service for people and how important it is to serve your country, um, what a blessing it is to live in America, what America means to the rest of the world. And so I think that's really the, where my passion on this issue comes from because it's, of all the issues, I mean, what you can't have any argument for is the United States engaging in torture. I mean, there are three acts that are completely illegal in any country in the world under international law for which there can be no exceptions. There are no circumstances under which you can commit these practices as civilized people, and that's slavery, genocide, and torture. In Catholic teaching, something that is intrinsically evil is something that can never be done under any circumstance. Torture is intrinsically evil because under no circumstances can it be justified because it violates the life and dignity of the human person. In fact, it not only violates the dignity of the victim, the immediate victim, it also violates the, violates the dignity of the perpetrator and it violates the integrity of the society within which we live because any society that tolerates an action such as torture is a, is a society that's uh, toying with something intrinsically evil that will be corrosive to the society as a whole. It will break down trust between people. It will make the world a less safe place for all of us. I've known for a long time that there was this very troubling aspect to our government. This is not a political issue. This is not just about uh, any particular administration. This is about torture. This is about torture, which is never justified. I am a survivor of torture. I was arrested, imprisoned, and tortured uh, in 1982 during the Marcos dictatorship. And I was imprisoned for four years. And uh, those four years changed my whole life. The whole, I would say, the whole trajectory of my life was entirely changed. Right from the time of the Revolutionary War, clearly stated by George Washington, that we will not abuse, treat inhumanely any prisoners that, that uh, our army takes. Or, uh, even though, even at that time, uh, the Hessians had in fact uh, uh, abused American prisoners. 
So it's from the beginning with the American military, it has been established that we will not take any action that looks like torture. We have to note that, you know, it's not so, it was a matter of military policy for 200 years, more than 200 years, but then it also became a matter of law. Congress passed a law, the Anti-Torture Act, that you know, made it a felony uh, to, uh, to resort to torture. You know that I come from India. I have opted for American citizenship. I have chosen it for me because I believe that America is a model for the rest of the world. So therefore it is more frustrating for me if I hear a news where I see that we are falling short of those standards. And torture is that form of lawlessness which undermines everything that a constitutional government, the Magna Carta and habeas corpus and so on, stands for. It's an issue about the soul of America. What is America? You know, who are Americans? What do we stand for? The American approach in interrogation was, I think, it was uh, subtle, sophisticated, and involved learning the adversary's culture and his language uh, and uh, engaging him, but not using physical force or brutality in any way. And these techniques actually were extremely effective, more effective than the techniques that were used by the Nazis or the Japanese and involved using torture. Those are techniques that broke people, certainly, but they really rarely got actionable intelligence out of them. The military, for a while, and the CIA, um, for one reason or another, lost confidence in traditional interrogation techniques that had been developed over a long period of time. And so, um, borrowing from a variety of sources, including um, we now know North Korean uh, interrogation techniques, um, the techniques that were used and are used on our uh, troops, some of them at least, who undergoing basic training and having to learn how to deal with scenarios that might happen when if they are captured. I arrived in March of 2006. That was at the height of the Civil War uh, and uh, the height of the violence that was happening. Suicide bombings were a daily occurrence. Uh, the body count was unbelievable. On the, Every morning you would wake up and there would be bodies lying all over the country uh, as a result of the reprisal killings by Shia militia and also the retaliation by Sunni insurgent groups. People talk hypothetically about a ticking time bomb, but we live the ticking time bomb every day. Uh, we were dealing with suicide bombers. We often captured people uh, just after suicide bombers had left their houses to conduct missions. Uh, in the case of one person I talk about in my book, a man named Abu Ali, he had been caught right after he had uh, finished blessing suicide bombers who went out for a mission in Baghdad. So we uh, were against the ticking time bomb, literally. Uh, you can have an interrogation that's intense emotionally for a detainee, but it can be ethical. In the case of intelligence interrogations, uh, I can come up with all types of techniques that I know from a criminal background that are very intense, but they're ethical. I'm never going to cross the line and go into coercion. I'm never going to threaten somebody. I'm never going to humiliate or use torture or abuse. Uh, I'm going to bring out their emotions and convince them to cooperate with me uh, in a good way, in a spirit of cooperation and negotiation. You know, this is the one place where we meet our enemy face to face on the battlefield and get to talk to them. And we have to do that in a spirit of cooperation and negotiation if we're going to be successful. Uh, our biggest catch to date in the war on terror is Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. And we caught him using non-coercive techniques, using relationship building techniques, using our intellect, using compassion, sometimes uh, offering deals to, uh, to people to work with us. Uh, but they had nothing to do with the techniques that are shown on shows like 24. Uh, it was just the opposite. Members of the Senate Intelligence Committee have publicly refuted the idea that torture provided critical intelligence in the hunt for bin Laden. Senator McCain, in fact, directly criticized the movie Zero Dark Thirty, saying that the filmmakers fell hook, line, and sinker for a false narrative about how the United States obtained intelligence to track down bin Laden. And I understand that's Hollywood and it's art and they can put what they want 
uh, inside art, but I want people to know that the reality, those of us who have been on the ground and had to interrogate high-level members of Al-Qaeda who are committed to their cause, we achieve success by using relationship building approaches, not by using brutality. Jewish tradition has a lot to say about it, and uh, sadly Jews have also experienced torture uh, throughout our history, but the basic uh, element uh, uh, why we're opposed to torture in, in any form whatsoever is the idea that human beings are created in the image of God. We shouldn't say, uh, the, the Talmud says this, don't say that uh, um, just because you've been dishonored, you can dishonor your fellow human being. Remember that that human being is created in the image of God. God created him that way. And if you dishonor a human being, you're actually dishonoring God. In general, Catholic teaching believes that the human person is both sacred and social. And the human person is sacred because they're created in the image and likeness of God. And in Christ, every person has been offered salvation. And so that the human person has a value that doesn't come because of their position in life, it doesn't come from uh, how much money they have or how much prestige they can command. It comes from the very fact that they're a child of God, that they're created in the image of God. First and the foremost thing that Quran and the sayings of the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad emphasize is the fundamental right, the right to dignity for human beings. So the Quran is very clear. There is a verse in the Quran which says that God created man and invested him inherent, with inherent dignity. So it's our duty to make sure that it does not, he is not in, his, in any way, any human being is not put through a process which is undignified, humiliating, and existentially and physically uh, resorts to torture. So a, a, a Muslim is prohibited from torturing not just a human being, but any living creature. For the religious community, um, for the three Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Islam, and, and Judaism, and for other religions as well, human beings have a specialness. Uh, the Abrahamic religions define it as being created in the image of God. Um, so the violations against human beings are really a violation against God. And so when you see human beings and hence God being violated in that way, it just has developed a, a huge commitment by many people that this just has to end. Issues can simultaneously be policy issues, security issues, military issues, and moral issues. And um, I joined the many others in, in this country who believe that it's all of that, that torture is a moral issue. And um, it violates principles of basic justice and humanity. And I mean, from a deeper religious perspective or Christian perspective, it's the most unloving thing you can do to a person. It's hateful and um, contemptuous and therefore contemptible. There are two victims of torture when it is practiced. Uh, there is the person to whom it is physically applied, and there is the person who is administering the, 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 uh, the techniques. Uh, that person also is morally compromised, uh, and that person uh, may, in fact, uh, suffer uh, severely and psychologically uh, as a result of, uh, of the torture technique. And so when a government says, you know, we want you to apply these techniques and do these things, they're inflicting very severe psychological damage on the person they're instructing to carry out these techniques. Uh, and in fact, when we look at this war on terror, there are three separate cases that I've been studying uh, involving um, stellar U.S. personnel, uh, one an Army colonel, uh, uh, one a, uh, an interrogation sergeant and another uh, a junior officer, uh, each of whom uh, committed suicide and left behind notes uh, saying uh, that they had been required to do things in the course of their service and each of them had been involved in some of these interrogations uh, that they could not reconcile with their conscience uh, and they decided to end their life on the basis of this. When 
we go in and, and do these things that our country has long recognized that these kinds of methods are torture and they're illegal. When we have seen American POWs held by North Korea subjected to the same kind of sleep deprivation, isolation, we have without hesitation called that torture and asked for those people who, who perpetrated it to be prosecuted or held accountable. And we have maintained that within all of our military engagements. We've had very, very clear lines of what constitute torture and impermissible interrogation methods. And in part, it's because we don't want that to be reciprocated against our soldiers and our servicemen and women. I'd also say that as a human being, that when we dehumanize someone enough to engage in torture, we dehumanize ourselves. The torturer is dehumanized. And there's damage from that that reverberates throughout an entire community. When someone who's a victim of torture goes back into their community, their relationship with their spouse is damaged, their relationship with their children and their relationship with their community. And it has a fallout that can potentially create more violence and pain in a community. When a torturer comes home, when someone who has numbed themselves enough and dehumanized another human being enough to engage in these practices, they come back a damaged person as well. And many of the American personnel who've been involved in interrogations, particularly in Iraq and Afghanistan, have come back and had very troubling and very troubled re-entries into the United States and are just now starting to speak out about the help they need, the regret they feel, the distance that they're experiencing with their own spouse and family, their inability to casually re-enter American society after having stepped over to the dark side and trying to come back into the country. So on, on many levels, torture may happen in a single place, in a single incident, but then it stays with us and it stays with a larger community just than the people involved. I would say that the symptoms are minimized a little, but they are still there, really. I don't think I will completely recover. I still get bad dreams, I still get nightmares. There are still nights when I don't get a good night's sleep because of some incident during the day. It could be something that happened at work. It could be something that just happened or something that you hear on the radio that could trigger this thing. And things come back. And uh, so I have learned to live with, uh, with this and I try to live as much as I can and make the best of them. There's a picture I see all the time, maybe not everybody sees it, it's of Guantanamo, it's got these guys kneeling down, they got orange uniforms on, they're hooded, they're, they are, uh, their, their sight and their ears are blocked out, uh, they're, they're uh, uh, chained uh, in, a, in a kneeling position to the ground, the guards are looking over them. That's, we're witnessing torture there, multiple forms of torture, sensory deprivation, stress positions, uh, 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 in combination, break a person mentally and emotionally when, when used over time. These, these techniques are always used in combination, never just one uh, alone. And uh, the perpetrators who inflict this kind of mental pain and anguish on people and the people who undergo it are both damaged for life. Torture does not end when the torture session ends. Uh, and uh, the people who have been tortured, even if they can begin to live some semblance of a normal life, uh, they keep struggling with it. And very often, in the end, they take their lives. I think it's just a risk that's far too great to take. The greater risk is always that we will accept torture and it will become part of who we are. And then we, we will be less than fully human. Millions of people will see the award-winning movie Zero Dark Thirty about the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden, and many will leave the theater thinking that the use of torture produced important intelligence. That is false. The American people deserve the facts about torture, and those facts are contained in a 6,000-page report recently adopted in a bipartisan vote by the Senate Intelligence Committee. That report, according to senators familiar with its findings, reveals that torture was harmful to our national security and did not provide us 
with the intelligence leading us to bin Laden. The Senate Intelligence Committee should make that report public. I wish I didn't know it. So I felt like now that I know it, I, I have to do something. I have to. Join the National Religious Campaign Against Torture in urging the Senate Intelligence Committee to release their report on torture. The American people want and need the facts about torture.